Hey guys, welcome to a new video where we're going to show you an overview of the new feature Google Map. So this allows you to get all the different kinds of features that you normally would search for manually inside the Google Maps feature on Google. And you can now do several different kinds of actions inside of your flow builder, which opens up a ton of new use cases, right? So you can find the Google Map integration on the integration section on the left-hand corner. And from there, you can just scroll down until you see the section with Map, where you have Google Map and Mapbox. Both work similar, but today we're going to discuss Google Map. As you can see, I already integrated my key and to integrate your key and to integrate your key, and we will also post down a link in the video description for easy access. Once integrated, I'm first going towards the e-commerce section of the workspace because we can do a certain use case for this later on inside the flow. So I'm scrolling down towards locations and I'm now going to insert a new location. So part of this Google Map and Mapbox update is that we can also add new locations for the store. So if you have multiple stores or just one store, you can add the location there. Now, if we go towards the actual flow that we set up as an example, then we have different kinds of options. We are going to highlight two. The first one will be to get directions between a specific address from the starting point to the end point. And the second option will be to get the, basically the store closest towards the customer itself. So for easy access, right? That is also part of this update. So if we're going to take a look, if we're going with directions, we're first going to capture the address of the user and we're going to save that inside of a start address custom field. Then we're going to ask for the destination. So where does the user want to go to? And we're going to save that in the response go to address. To find the Google Maps action, we can go towards the integration section on the note, on the action note itself. And if we scroll about half, uh, halfway, you will see Google Map API and Mapbox API. So if we choose that one, I already did so, I'm now able to basically have all of these actions at my disposal. So I can get geocodes by address. I can get addresses by geocodes. I can get a distance ma matrix. We can also get directions and we can also get directions by address. The get directions go by latitude and longitude and get directions by address is just between two different kinds of addresses. Now, the way that I set it up for this example is we're going with a origin, start address and a destination. You can also select what kind of mode you want to have. So we can have driving, walking or cycling. Then you can also insert the language. And for reference, you can take a look at the language support for Google developers by using this link. I just go with English. And if we also want to remove certain variables from the display, we also added the option to basically minimize the payload because sometimes Google Maps returns a huge payload and not every piece of information is pretty much needed. Right? So for example purposes, I have two different kinds of addresses here in Hungary, uh, one in different kinds of places. And let's just remove this geocode waypoint and let's say test request. Now, if I'm saying test request, you will get a status of OK. You get a bunch of information here and the actual route. So the actual directions will be between this section of legs. You will see the distance. So you can save the distance, right? You can also save the duration, which will be 30 minutes. And we can also say, OK, uh, we want to have the actual directions, will be, which will be under the steps section. So as you can see here, we have four different kinds of steps to take. And each step will have its own uh, instruction and then also the maneuver that we need to do and also the start location, the distance between the different kinds of sections. Basically the same as a Google Maps when using their um, GPS, right? To drive to certain addresses. So after 400 meters or 400 miles turn right at the roundabout, for example, something like that. Um, so that is all being saved here. But again, we don't need all these, uh, all these top values, right? So we can just say, okay, we want to remove this value. We don't need it. So let's put that inside the keys to remove. So if we are going to say test request now, now we only get the route section. So for example, if you want to remove the summary as well, we can just go with a comma and then separate it by summary. So if we say test request, now the summary should also be removed as you can see here. If we want to basically get rid of the duration, right? So let's say we want to get rid of the duration, then that should also be possible. So let's take a look if this works. And now you'll see that the duration now has been basically removed from the payload. And this, this way you can minimize the payload that you get back and prevent the values that are being saved inside the JSON field to reach the 20K character limit. So this is a good way to minimize your payload. Um, so we are, we are able to basically go and map the steps, right? We can map the steps and we can say, okay, I want to map this towards directions, for example. So let's say we're going to map this towards a JSON field called directions. Let's press add. And now we have a nice JSON field with directions. We can, of course, format this using a JavaScript with a nice looking navigation like type of output, or you can also go with simple gallery cards. So for example, if I say I am going with a gallery output, like a send message, right? Let's go for it for each step. Let's go with directions. And let's say inside the title, actually leave the title as is, and let's go with the item. And then for, from here, we could say, okay, we want the HTML instructions, right? Um, we, for the title, we could say something like 
You can also add the distance and stuff like that if you want to make it a little bit more comprehensive, right? So let's do a quick preview. Let's publish this and then let's just preview the bottom solution. So let's say get directions. Now let's go with the example. Where is your address? What is your address? That will be this one. Now it will ask the go to address, right? So let's fetch that as well. There we go. And let's see if we get certain directions. And as you can see now we have simple driving instructions. So it's still a little bit unformatted, of course, because we are just pasting in the raw HTML uh, directions, right? But you can see that we now have the directions head northeast on, and then we have the specific street. And if we just go towards these sections, you will see that we have the different kinds of directions. In this case, we have four different kinds of directions because the addresses are pretty close towards each other. And this is just, of course, one way to display the directions, but again, formatting it towards a nice looking uh, output and navigation is of course much nicer and has an actual use case, right? So that is something that you could do with a JavaScript. So the second option is show closest store. And if we're going to take a look here, then we are first going to fetch nearby stores. So if we're going to take a look with the e-commerce API, which you can find here, right? We are now going with the action find nearby stores. I just put in a, a static value, so latitude and longitude and then also the distance unit in kilometers, and then I will fetch one specific store because we don't have anything other than this, right? So this is something that we can output. Now, the results, uh, as you can see, uh, will be saved inside of a store locations JSON field. I'm just going to map this data, as you can see here, and then store locations will be shown. Now, we're going with a for each step again, and inside the for each step, we will have a name, an address, and we could also potentially put in the distance here. So let's say distance, and then give the output for distance, right? So that is also being saved. Let's say output distance is this, and then let's just add kilometer to it. So if we're going to preview from this step, basically choosing the closest store, right? So let's just preview it from here. Then we should get a gallery overview. So let's take a look. There we go. So we have a location that is being fetched from this e-commerce location section, and we have a nice looking display. So if I say get directions, it will ask for the specific address, right? In this case, it's a little bit redundant, but I want to show an additional Google Maps action. So on this action, before I'm going to say what's your address, you will see that I'm going to first ask for the starting address, and now I'm going with a different kind of uh, Google Map API, and that is get geocodes by address. So I'm going to basically pull in this address where upon the preview inside the web chat, and now I want it to save the longitude and the latitude. If I'm going to say test request, then you will see that I get a different kinds of address components, but the location is the most important one because that contains the latitude and the longitude, and I'm both saving them inside of their own custom field, a text custom field in this case. So what happens then is the next step will be to get directions. And this time the get directions does not go by address, but goes by latitude and longitude. We have the latitude and longitude saved from the Google Map API call from get geocode by address. So those are these values, and these are the store values that we saved, right? So this is something that we can do, and then we will basically get pretty much the exact same output. So if we are going to test the request here, first and foremost, you will see that we first need to get rid of this endpoint don't really need it, so let's get rid of that. And also let's get rid of the uh, geocoder status. That is also something we don't really need, so let's get rid of that as well. So let's just have that comma separated. And the last one, uh, let's just go with the summary. Also not really needed. So let's say test request, and now we only get the directions left, right? So we are just going to map these steps again and basically go with the exact same JSON field, add it, and then the result will basically be pretty much the same as what we have here. So we can just map that towards this specific section. Now let's insert the address that we basically inserted here. So let's just grab the value. Let's grab this value, there we go. And let's insert this and see what happens, right? Now the Google Map API will search, get the directions, and then we will get towards the specific section. And as you can see, we get the directions now. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards, right? And then the destination, as you can see at the end, will be on the right. So again, you can format this using a JavaScript towards your own preference on how you want to get this done. But that is totally up towards your own preference. An example could be the following. So if you want to format it using a JavaScript, for example, you could have something like this. So below you will find your directions, right? So head north for 0.1 kilometers, in 90 meters turn left, in 0.2 kilometers turn right, and all the way at the end, you will then see in 65 meters turn right onto this specific street, destination will be on the right. So this is something that you can do using a JavaScript, but it totally depends on your own preference. So with the Google Maps API, there are totally different kinds of use cases that you can use, basically customizing it towards your own liking. So do try out this new action, either by Google Maps API or by Mapbox. The actions are pretty similar. And if you have any questions, do let us know, and we'll try to help you out as soon as possible. For now, have some fun, have a great day, take care, and talk soon.